how to balance mental health providers' resilience and wellness while caring for distressed individuals in today's uncertain times. So if I, if I understand correctly, this is for people working in the area. How can they keep their mental health in check mm -hmm. and well while they're caring for distressing individuals? That's a perfect question because it's actually been one of our most popular topics this year is vicarious trauma which is around how we look after ourselves when we're exposed to people who are in distress or people who've experienced trauma. And that can come in a range of ways, predominantly from health professionals, but we've also had a lot of organisations who have first responders, a lot of advocacy and legal firms. Uh, we've even had people who are working in retail who are faced with people in distress a lot. So it's kind of cutting across a whole lot of different areas. Um, And I think, you know, there's a whole lot of different strategies and tools you can do to look after yourself. But I think one at the core of it is this idea that if I'm helping someone else or I'm caring for someone else or I'm giving to someone else, then that's depleting or using up my energy. And therefore, you know, I give and I give and then I've got to go away and sort of recharge myself and get myself well again. And then I go and I give some more and then I come back and I recharge and that we're sort of losing our own well-being when we help someone else. And I think we need to turn that around. In fact, we need to turn it on its head and instead see it as, a, it as something that doesn't necessarily need to deplete my well-being when I help someone else. In fact, it can actually help me to feel better and good myself. We know contributing to others is good for well-being. So this is kind of the idea that's behind the term compassion satisfaction. But it's that idea that instead of having compassion fatigue and I get tired of caring for other people, if I focus on the benefits that I get out of that, how good it makes me feel to give to others, how that builds me, then you can keep going, you know, mm. without having to have that sort of backwards and forwards recharge all the time process. Uh, so I think that's a really new idea for a lot of people and it takes a little bit of adjustment to, to, to get there. But we know from all the research that having higher amounts of compa compassion satisfaction um, is protective against vicarious trauma, against stress, burnout, um, compassion fatigue, all of those things. Um, so we, we need to tap into that and find the meaning in what we're doing and find that sense of fulfillment and purpose when we're helping and giving to others. And that, mm. that sustains us too. Which is interesting that you say that compassion satisfaction because um, what I've noticed here in Spain, you know, lifeguards are not held in a very status position. Mm. So every time I talk to the lifeguards, they're always complaining. They, I can't wait until I finish this job. I want to go home. I want to start working in something else, etc. Which to me is very surprising as an Australian It's very surprising because we love our lifeguards. The lifeguards are amazing. We, you know, we hold them in such a high status, you know, and our lifeguards are happy people. They take pride on being lifeguards. I've never heard a lifeguard complain about being a lifeguard in Australia ever. And the difference is that in Australia, they feel like they're doing a good job for the community and the community is so appreciative, which they are. We need our lifeguards, um, especially in Australia. Uh, And they're held in, in such an important status. Kids can't wait to be lifeguards. You know, we, we never run out of lifeguards in Australia. You know, in here, they're having to be paid. And in the, not all of them, obviously, but they seem to have a general idea that that's a lowly, a lowly uh, job to have. You know? yeah. So that's the difference, isn't it? I mean, if, if I feel, uh, oh, my God, I'm a psychologist and I'm going to be listening to people's problems all day, Well, that's, that, yeah, I'm going to burn out. I, I'm going to burn out. But if I feel, oh, my God, I'm like lucky. I'm a psychologist and I can have a little bit of influence on making somebody's life better and their families and their kids. That's amazing. What a privilege. Mm -hmm. Completely different attitude. And one is, what was it called? What was the satisfaction? Compassion, compassion satisfaction. satisfaction. <laughs> the other one, compassion fatigue. Mm. Yeah, good point. 
Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.